Welcome to the second session about type functional programming in Haskell. In this session, we'll cover the following learning goals. What are the learning goals of the session? Well, um, after the session, you should be able to understand common Haskell functions on lists and their types. You should understand lazy evaluation and its semantics as it appears in Haskell. We've already seen something very similar for Scheme, but now it's Haskell time. And you should be able to write programs in Haskell that make use of lazy evaluation. You should understand the list functionals, map, fold left and fold right, as they appear in a typed setting. You should uh, be able to understand and use ranges and list comprehension as they appear in Haskell. You should uh, be able to use user-defined recursive data types to find structured data. And you should be able to define recursive functions over data types. Let's start with um, functions on lists. Um, we've already seen uh, lists in Scheme and we've already had a taste of how you can uh, work with lists in Haskell. And the same functionals that can be used in Scheme can of course be defined in Haskell. The best known one may be map and uh, the behavior of map is that if we apply map to a function f and a list x1 to xn then this should uh, return a list uh, of fx1 up to f of xn. And uh, this functional map is predefined, it's found in the standard prelude of Haskell. So you don't need to, to write down map yourself. But let's try to define map ourselves as map prime, such that we can find out how it's implemented. And also let's find the type of this map prime. Uh, which really is the same as map, and has, has the same behavior as map. So uh, we're now going to uh, define a function map prime. Uh, the reason why we call it map prime is that the map function is already part of the standard prelude of Haskell. Map prime is a function that will take a function f and a list and return the list uh, consisting of the elements of the original list with f applied to each of them. Uh, and we define map prime by means of pattern matching uh, with respect to the list. So the first clause uh, of the definition of map prime will be a clause that uh, tells us what to do with the empty list. And here nothing happens because f applied to all the elements of the empty list is just the list, well, same list, the empty list. So the other more interesting clause is that of map prime and f and a non-empty list, a list with head x and a tail of x's. And what do we get here? Well, um, we get a list and the head of the list is f applied to x. And what's the tail of the list? The tail of the list is what we get by calling map prime recursively. with f and xs. So that's map prime for you. Let's save this and send it to the buffer. What do we get? We get this. Yes. Let's try to uh, apply map prime to a function. Let's use the anonymous function uh, lambda x x plus 7 and apply that to the list 1, 2, 3, 4. What do we get? 8, 9, 10, 11, just as expected. Um, now you might wonder what is the type of map prime. Map prime is a polymorphic function and let's see what the polymorphic type of map prime is. Well, now what is the type of map prime? Let's find out. Map prime is a higher order function. Uh, it takes a function f as its first argument, and after that, it takes a list as its second argument. So, um, since map prime takes a function f as its first argument, its type must be t to t1 for some types t and t1. And after that, 
its second argument is um, a list and since f is applied to the elements of the list and we can see that f is of type t to t1 we see that the second argument must be a t list and we see that the resulting list is a list of elements of type t1 so the result type of this function is a t1 list let's see what haskell says about this system about the type of map prime and indeed the type of map prime is t to t1 to t list to t1 list and we notice that we haven't specified what t and t1 are so map prime is a polymorphic type map prime will have type t to t1 to t list to t1 list for any types t and t1 map prime is a polymorphic function now sometimes we're interested in a specialized kind of mapping uh, that takes a list and a predicate and leaves us with the elements in the list that satisfy the predicate and we call this the filter function uh, the filter functional if we apply it to um, the predicate huge of x uh, which is true if x is greater than 2 and my list 54126712 we'd expect that if we apply filter to huge in my list we would get uh, the list of uh, numbers in the original list that are greater than 2, that will be 5, 4, 6, 7. So um, let's try to define uh, the filter function. Filter is a function that takes a predicate and a list as arguments and returns uh, the sublist uh, of elements for which the predicate is true. Now, filter is also part of the standard Haskell prelude, so we'll call our version of filter, filter prime. So filter prime takes a predicate p and a list, and again we use pattern matching to define our function. First, uh, we define how filter prime acts on the empty list. We get back the empty list. Next, we'll define how filter prime acts when applied to a predicate p and a non-empty list with head x and tail xs. Well, uh, if p of x is true, remember a predicate is just a function that returns a truth value. If p of x, then x belongs in the result, so x is const onto the um, result of applying filter prime uh, with the predicate p and the tail xs. Else, if x, is, if x does not make p true, then x does not belong in the list, so we simply call filter prime of p and xs. So now let's uh, define the predicate huge x, as we saw before, the one that's true if x is greater than 2, and have my list uh, be 5, 4, 6, 9, one, two, ten, and let's send this to Haskell and see what happens if we call filter prime on huge in my list. Yes, indeed, we have the sublist corresponding of all corresponding to all the elements in the original list uh, that are greater than two. So yes. That's indeed the case. Now the burning question is, what is the type of filter prime? Now to see what the type of filter prime is, again remember filter prime is a higher order function. Its first argument, p, is a predicate. Uh, a predicate is a function that takes an element and returns a truth value. So um, p should have type t to bool. And as our next element, we take a list. And um, this should be a t list, of course. 
because we're applying the predicate to the to to our t list. So this and that should be the same type. And we're returning a sublist. So the result type of this function should also be uh, a list uh, of type t list. So that's what we claim uh, filter prime has this type. So let's see what Haskell has to say about this. Haskell says let's find the type of filter prime. And indeed, it is the case that filter prime has type t to bool to t list to t list. And again, uh, when we figured this out, we made no assumptions about t. So filter prime has this type for any type t. So filter prime is also a polymorphic function, which is not so strange when we think about it, since filter prime can really be thought of as a different uh, special case of map prime. So nothing strange about that.